All right, y'all, let's talk about this Dwight Howard story. I wasn't going to talk about this story, to be completely real with y'all. Um, I was sitting in bed because I was like, bro, I don't know. This story is so graphic. It's so, like, crazy. I don't even know if this is going to be beneficial. But um, I was sitting on the couch. I said in bed. I was sitting on the couch, not in bed. And I was thinking, I was like, you know what? This story, there's actually a lot of wisdom that we can pull from this story as Christians and learn from. At least I believe that. Maybe you will disagree, but give me a second to explain my idea as to why I believe that. Former NBA star Dwight Howard denies sexual assault lawsuit filed by Georgia Mann. So Dwight Howard, this is such an interesting story because like Dwight Howard, he at, at one point in time, he was one of the biggest names in the entire NBA. Like he was one of the biggest names in the NBA. Dwight Howard has he's made hundreds of millions of dollars i don't know how much he has now but he's made hundreds of millions of dollars i'm sure that he's been with his fair share of women maybe even hundreds of women if not more he has five children with five different baby mamas and the only reason why i bring that up is just to highlight the fact that our sinful nature will never be satisfied. And actually, the more that we try to satisfy our sinful nature, the bigger our desire for sin will become. And I believe, in my humble opinion, that this is contributing to the situation that we're seeing with Dwight Howard. This situation is weird um, on so many different levels, on so many different levels. So Dwight Howard, he meets a man on Instagram. I guess Dwight was attracted to this man. He tells this man to come over to his house so they could do what they are going to do, whatever that is. I'm not even going to try to think about whatever that could be. But the man agrees to come over to meet with Dwight and do that thing. And Dwight, before the man comes over to Dwight's house, Dwight says, hey, you know what? Can we add another person to this arrangement? Can we add another person? It could be three of us and we can have a good time, right? And the man says, no, he doesn't want to add another person. He just wants to meet with Dwight. And so the man shows up to Dwight's house under the impression that it's just going to be Dwight, that he's going to be doing whatever they're going to be doing, right? And then out of nowhere, another man dressed as a woman named Kitty joins them. I was trying to think of a word to say. I'm just going to say joins them. And then as, at this point is where the assault comes in. Because Kitty and Dwight Howard, who, by the way, is like seven feet tall, 280 pounds. Kitty and Dwight Howard seemingly or allegedly pressure this man that Dwight met on Instagram into doing sexual acts against his will. So that's one aspect of the story. But then the story gets even crazier because it's like when it rains, it pours, right? Now we have this story that comes out about Dwight Howard. It says he actually flew three 17-year-old girls here. So this is um, alleging that Dwight Howard is also into pedophilia. <sighs> Dwight is doing interviews. Let me show you this interview real quick. Um, I'm going to try to like bleep out the uh, curse words, but there might be some that slip through just so you know. But let me show you this interview because Dwight is already doing interviews. Um, I don't know why this man just don't stay in the house. Like, bro, stay in the house. I don't know who you are getting your advice from, but you don't need to be out here talking. Like, just sit down for a second, you know. But nonetheless, let me show you what he said. Just yeah, Mr. Just Dwight chilling. Howard, man. Let's give a live hand clap for Mr. Dwight Howard. Now, you're going viral, bro. For a lot of things. 
So I just gotta just gotta ask for the people. Me personally, mm -hmm. I don't. Right, but they say this is the safest time. Are you gay, bro? Is this what you want to talk about? No, I don't want to talk about that, so bro. So then why are we talking about it? Because you went viral off of that, bro. I've so been thing... viral for a lot of things. And, and I want to talk about that, too. And what my what I do in my personal life is nobody fucking Thank you. business. Thank you. That, that, I so, just want you to answer so, that. No, no, I, I, I keep I, going. It's nobody, it's nobody business. Right. And if you inquire, why? Why? Because I was I'm just explaining to other people. Why? Oh, for, not ahead. for me. Not for yeah. me. I don't give a fuck, bro. I want to talk basketball. I want to talk other shit. Okay. The reason why I thought that was interesting is because, like, if you are 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 unashamed in your lifestyle, then you just gonna stand on that and you just gonna say what it is. If you're unashamed of who you choose to lay down with, then that would show in your response. But if you have a sense of shame in what you're doing behind closed doors, then that will also show in your response. And I feel like, bro, if you just are proud <laughs> of the behavior that you partake in behind closed doors, then you would say that. And it's so interesting because you look at the Bible, you look at King Solomon, who is believed to be the writer of Ecclesiastes, right? King Solomon, this dude, you got to understand, had everything that you could ever think of. Like any, any amount of money, he had it. Any, you know, woman, he had her. Any, you know, piece of jewelry, food, wine, he had it. He tasted it. And I thought this was so interesting because even Solomon in Ecclesiastes, uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, you know, he says that he didn't spare his heart from any desire that he had. So anything that he wanted, anything that his eyes saw, that he wanted, he didn't spare himself from that. He allowed himself to do that. He allowed himself to taste it. He allowed himself to sleep with that woman. He had hundreds of concubines. Concubines, if you don't know, is essentially the equivalent to like a side chick. So he had hundreds of women. And he said everything that he had tasted, experienced, everything that we hold to be so valuable on earth, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything if you don't have a relationship with God and you're always going to be chasing, trying to fill up your cup because you're going to be empty, because you're constantly emptying yourself. You're constantly empty and draining yourself of your energy when you're partaking in sin. You're draining yourself of your energy. And you got to think about it. The devil is empty. The devil needs to drain you of something in order to fill himself up. That's why the devil loves to put you in situations and tempt you to where you can partake in a sin and drain yourself of your energy. To, to take your focus off of Christ and put your focus on your sinful nature so that you can fulfill that. Because that action of you taking your, your focus off of Christ and onto your sin, that action is actually fulfilling to the devil he feeds off of that he needs that but then you look at god god is overflowing god doesn't want anything from you god just wants to have a relationship with you god doesn't need anything from you but he wants a relationship with you the devil needs everything from you and the devil simply wants to steal kill and and, and destroy your life and even when you look at the situation of, of Dwight Howard from like a kid's standpoint, and I don't want to get too crazy into the situation, but I just want to use this as an example, right? Dwight Howard, he's made hundreds of millions of dollars. He has five children with five different women. That's five different households, right? As men, we're called to be, well, as husbands, we're called to be the, the minister of our household, the spiritual leader of our household. How are you supposed to be the spiritual leader to five different households? Dwight Howard has made hundreds of millions of dollars. At that level of wealth, you are called to be generous. You are called to use that wealth to further the kingdom of God. But look how the devil has 
perverted the minds of so many people when people get a lot of money for example let's just use Dwight as an example I don't want to pick on Dwight but his face is on the screen so let's just use him as an example right he has all of this money right Dwight probably feels like why should I settle down with one woman or with one man whatever he's into nowadays I don't know why should I settle down I have enough money to support these different households and I got enough money. I'm a high value man. Like I, I shouldn't be tied down to anybody. Like I got enough, right? But look at the devil. Now your finances are spread out across five different households as opposed to just one household. Now your attention and your time is spread out across five different households as opposed to just one household. Now your children are growing up in an environment where they see multiple different men coming in and out of the household because I'm sure that the, these women, if they're not with Dwight, the mother of his children, I'm sure they're probably dating different men. So now you're exposing your children to that. So all of these resources, your time, your energy, your, your, your spiritual um, you know, wisdom that you could be pouring into your family, the, the, the finances that you could be pouring in to create generational wealth within your family so that you know you can continue to be a blessing to other people. All of these things are now slowly be are, are now slowly being drained by the devil because of the decision to have multiple different partners and multiple different women to bear your children. And the devil is feeding off all of that. He's like, yeah, keep going. Have more. Look at Nick Cannon. Have 10, have 11, have 12 baby mamas. Have more. It's never enough. And you got to understand that everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. The most powerful thing that a man can do, a quote unquote high value man who makes a lot of money and who has a lot of options and stuff like that. The most powerful thing that you could do is to settle down with one woman, is to build your family with one woman, is to keep everything in one household, is to build your, your wealth with one woman and with your children, to build up your household, to be strong and faithful to be a giving household, a household that blesses your community, a household that blesses your community and points them towards God to glorify God. That's the most powerful thing that you can do. But the devil has manipulated the minds of so many you know, men in these situations to make them feel like they're less than if they settle down with one woman. Now they have this desire to be with so many different women and to you know, spread their seed. It's never enough. You're never going to fulfill your sinful nature. You're going to be chasing it, trying to fulfill your sinful nature until the day that you die. And then you're going to wake up and you're going to be sizzling in hell. And then you're going to realize, oh, my God. It was all meaningless. But you could have just opened up the Bible and you could have just read that for yourself. We have these beautiful examples of scripture that tells us that if you do not know God, it doesn't matter what you acquire. It doesn't matter any of the pleasures that you, that, that, that you taste. It doesn't matter any of that. If you don't know God, all of it is for nothing. All of it is for nothing. So you look at a situation like Dwight, You know, none of us are going to be perfect. We're all going to fall short. But you need to flee from your sin. And once you get to a place where your comfort with a, sort, with, with a certain sin outweighs your conviction, you're in a very dangerous place. It's a slippery slope. 
it's a slippery it's a slippery slope and just look at the white you might slide right into bed and now you looking over and you next to kitty and it's like how did i even get here oh well it's because you kept appeasing your flesh you kept doing everything that your flesh wanted you to do and then that desire grew bigger and bigger and bigger and then you felt like, oh, I need something different to fill this hole because what I'm doing now ain't doing it for me. So then you go out and now you're in bed with Kitty. Let me just stop. I'm not trying to be too judgmental, but I hope y'all understand what I'm trying to say, right? This thing called sin, it grows. Submit to God. Run to God. And even further than that, yo, there is no temptation that is stronger than the power of God. And if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit living within you. There is no temptation that is powerful than the Holy Spirit. There's always a way out. We are no longer slaves to our sin. We do not have to give in to every sinful desire that we feel. And I'll leave it at that. Let me know what you think. Like this video, comment. I'm out, y'all.